my name is Michelle Goins, and I'm the gallery director here at Arts by Salia. Today, we are very excited to be speaking with Kirk Maynard, one of our May 2021 featured artists. Kirk Maynard is a mixed media artist who is originally from Brooklyn, New York. A second generation Guyanese American, Maynard's work focuses on the political undercurrents of culture and identity in America. His work has been featured across the country and Arts by Salia is honored to have his work in our gallery. Welcome, Kirk. Nice to meet you. And uh, thank you for um, giving me the space to talk about my work and show my work. I'm very excited about it. Um, I always want people to hear <laughs> what I have to say, because especially during this time, it's super important. Start. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your background? Um, yes. Um, so um, like I was meant, um, like you were mentioning before, I am um, the son of Guyanese parents. Um, and so that colors a lot of my work. Um, and also my background colors a lot of my work. Um, I came around and I came to as a political activist on my own campus as of um, Andrews University when I was an undergrad as part of the Black Student Christian Forum um, uh, during a time where the Black Lives Matter movement was first starting around 2012. And that really allowed me to kind of see where I wanted my work to go, even though my work was not there. I was more so creating things that were aesthetically pleasing to me, but I never mixed politics and art until years later down the line that I'm now starting to mesh to two and speak about some of um, these issues with social history and with, um, as I'm gonna talk about later on, stereotype threat. And so that's kind of like a, big, a bit of a background of where I was before and um, where I am now with kind of like the meshing of art and also political issues. So why don't you kind of tell us about this body of work? Yeah, definitely. And so my periphery series mainly focuses on body language in response to stereotype threat. Um, and so this was really born out of um, this idea of what are the stereotypes that affect us in society. Um, and so, for instance, if, you know, someone's walking down the street, you know, and they're a black man, and a lot of the pictures there are um, pictures of black males, you know, how do people perceive them? How do people, you know, preconceive people of color in this country, or anyone who has, you know, a certain racially charged archetype attached to them. And I really wanted to focus on what is the response of the person who experiences that stereotype threat. And so all of my works are um, representations of those responses, you know, from the serene, such as the, you know, the hand on the belly lying down, or the nervousness of a hand being closed together in some of my works as part of the series, or the hoodie pulled down over the face, you know, an introspective look on that idea of um, stereotype threat and response to stereotype threat. And so all of these works are wrestling with that idea of the responses um, to some of these issues, which are there, but sometimes subconsciously, we don't understand. We know what the stereotype is, but we don't understand the effect and sometimes the negative effects that it has on the other per problem person. And so, um, really, my work seeks to bring that out into the forefront. So speaking of the hoodies, I, I noticed that in this series, almost all of the hoodies are, are gray or white sort of in color, and a couple of them are green. Were there, you know, a, a conscious choice about the color of the hoodies that you were using? Um, well, for the hoodies, uh, I wanted to make sure that the representation was very true um, to being. And so there's a variety of you know different types of hoodies and I've also branched out because most of my works when I first started out were personal representations of myself and then I branched out to other subjects who also um, posed for me um, in kind of like that subject um, in for my periphery series and so the hoodie itself is um, actually a part of the nature of my um, series because it is really hearkening back to the Trayvon Martin um, the entire trial where a lot of people you know in response to that actual trial you know started wearing hoodies and started talking about the fact that just because someone's wearing a hoodie it doesn't mean that they're doing something sinister or illegal right um but the idea of the hoodie was very racially charged and this was actually um something that has been dealt with even before many many years before the start of the black lives matter movement by david hammonds he created this work called into the hood and he is, was basically a green hood tacked onto the wall, right? And he was also dealing with the issue of the hood 
and kind of like the nature, the charged nature of the hood and what it represents. Because remember, we're dealing here with stereotypes, right? You know, and responses to those actual stereotypes. And the hoodie, even dress, is stereotyped, right? <laughs> um, even dress gets racially charged. And that's, you know, one of the unfortunate facts about the society that we live in. And so I wanted to talk about this issue and bring it into the forefront about this racially charged nature of, of dress and put that in my work you know, and to use it as not just a reclamation project, but a chance to bring out some of these subtle ways that, you know, body language and dress communicate with each other in response to some of these stereotypes. Yeah, no, and I, I think that shows and it's very powerful. Um, so you mentioned that these are a mix of both self-portraits and images of other people that you know? Yes. Excellent. So there's people that you are close with friends or are those people kind of pseudo strangers, just models that you're bringing in? Mm -hmm. Some are our friends. Some people I literally, you know, meet them, you know, just in general, you know, places and social gatherings. And I ask them to participate in my project. And that's probably, you know, one of the things that I love to do, you know, whenever I'm able to, you know, go into social gatherings, whether in friend groups or outside of friend groups, you know, I'm happy to meet people who are, you know, interested in some of these subjects and are willing to kind of like be part of this social history, you know, part of these projects um, that I'm trying to bring to life. And so that's kind of like part of what I do. It's there's a great variety and it's even increasing because like I was mentioning, most started with myself and then I've just started branching out and getting other people's stories and the people who are wanting to be involved in the periphery project. Yeah, it's really expanding that conversation. Yes, definitely. So speaking of periphery, um, so what does the title of the show Periphery mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, periphery means on the margins for me, right? And so that's one of the things I really love to do um, within my work, um, and especially for the series. I love to push things to the side, where they're pushing them down, and a lot of um, the works pushing them to the side. So you're only seeing portions of um, the actual portrait. And that's something that's um, pretty consistent throughout um, my actual series. And the reason being is I wanted to play on the words. The idea of pushing something to the periphery means you're marginalizing it, right? Um, and I'm trying to bring out that marginalization of people of color through stereotype threats. Um, in my work. And so I was playing on that word periphery to, you know, basically show it in, um, in my work and show it through the composition and how I place things in specific ways in the actual picture plane. Um, I noticed that, you know, in this series in particular, that they are almost all male figures, um, mm -hmm. but I do see a gorgeous portrait of a woman behind you. Do you mm -hmm. work a lot with, with women as well in your work? Um, yes, definitely. Actually, I'll speak about that series because the series with the um, um, that I've included women in is actually a precursor to my periphery series. And so I'll speak sp um, specifically about periphery and um, why I use black men um, specifically about it. And then I'll talk a little bit more about my serenity series. And the reason why I use black men is because um, I wanted to deal with that idea of black males and the stereotypes that have been attached to them, such as aggressive, you know, um, of course, that's the biggest one commanding in this in terms of like the atmosphere and what that does to the other person. And I wanted to kind of like show body language in response to kind of like how I was because remember it started first with me right I wanted to discuss, you know, how stereotype threat, you know, affected me as I was growing up. Right. And so that was a personal representation of me. And of course, the black male archetype um, within those stereotypes. Um, that was a pre on the Serenity series, which is one of the works that you see behind me, um, was a precursor. And that was, wasn't gender specific, but it also dealt with taking a stereotype. And this, and in this work, I wanted to really talk about ways to reclaim a negative um, stereotype. And so I actually um, used the composition of a mugshot side profile in my actual work. Um, and you're going to see that in a lot of kind of like the works that I do. And the Serenity series sought to take that form of negative portraiture and turn it into something beautiful and turn, and turn it into something that I could reclaim as my own and create in the way that I wanted to create. Um, a lot of times people say that the best way to, you know, break up some of these negative archetypes is to reclaim it as your own. There's a, a artist, um, very famous artist, Kehinde Wiley. He's probably one of the most preeminent um, appropriation artists who takes, you know, um, 
African Americans and people of the diaspora. And, you know, he basically recreates some um, old Renaissance paintings um, with African American people and people of the diaspora. And he's even increased kind of like um, the countries that he's included in them. And so being able to take some of these um, archetypes and put them in my work, and not just put them in my work, but reclaim them was a very big part. And so Serenity, uh, the Serenity Project was a project of joy because I'm reclaiming. And the Periphery series is more so a project of introspection because I still am taking these ideas of dress, but I'm talking about the negative light of some of these to bring to the fore. And I've always sought to balance them, right? Because, you know, you never, for me, I never wanted to create anything that would always um, put me in a headspace of this issue that we're going through is always going to be negative. I always wanted to kind of like um, have that balance where I'm bringing things to light, but at the same time, having projects that would bring me joy at the same time. And I could share that joy with other people. And so um, striking that balance has kind of like been something that I've um, been doing for the past couple of years. And that kind of like strikes towards the difference between the both, even though they're also um, all connected. So, well, thank you, Kirk. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and, and hearing about your work and insights into your process. Um, and we are so excited to have this show hanging through the month of May. Yes, definitely. It was a pleasure speaking to you as well. Perfect. Thank you.